Hi, my name is Newell Davis with World Composting, and I want to apologize for the video yesterday where you really couldn't see the materials falling into the bin. So you could see the bag really, really well, but the bin was kind of uh, invisible here at the bottom. So what I did is I am actually showing you here the material that's harvested. Now this is 24 hours later. The material has had a little bit of time to dry. I always leave it in a container like this to dry out a bit. I never just put it directly into the uh, the system itself. So, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you just gotta, you, it depends on how wet it is, but this isn't too bad now. It's dried out a little bit and, you know, it's definitely looking better. So, the one thing that I did mention last time is that there was a lot of worms in here, I felt. So let's just kind of dig down in here and you can see already right down here at the bottom, you've got a couple worms. Oops. So you got a couple of worms right here. They look pretty healthy, nice and big. So these are these are my European night crawlers. And some of the worms in this one doesn't look quite as healthy. Might be on its way out. Might have been damaged in somehow. But you know, there's probably more worms in here than uh, I'm showing right now. But the key is is starting to sort them and get them out of here. So I usually let the material dry. I can run it through my sifter, but I don't really feel I need that at this point. I don't feel a sifter is really needed for this type of material. And before I add it to my uh, container that I keep all of my cat finished castings in, what I'm going to want to do here is I really, really, really want to try to get as many worms as I can. So one of the things that other people have done, and I do the same thing, is I add in a piece of fruit like this and I bait them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig down here to the bottom. I don't do this on the top for two reasons. If you do it on the top, you're gonna get bugs. Bugs obviously like these things. And two, you want them to go away from the light. There's a little bit of light in my basement, not a whole lot, but a little bit. And this allows them to do that. So I'm gonna bury that in here. Now, when I come back in about a you know few days, probably like I wanna say between five and seven days, if you wanna wait that long, almost all the worms are gonna to try to find that food. It's wet, it's moist, and it's a good source of food for them, so they're gonna go and find it. And at that point, all the worms that make it to it, they're gonna go back into my urban worm bag, and these worms, or anything else left in here, is gonna go into my bin that gets uh, put into my garden in my yard. So that's how I kind of do it. Um, you know, I'll still also go through maybe and just check for these little plastic pieces. I'm not sure where they're coming from in there, but they are in there. Uh, I've tried to eliminate them, but I still seem to find them in bins every once in a while, those plastic pieces. You know, this is a piece of cardboard but this or paper, but that is breaking down, so I, I can leave that, and that can go in my yard or my garden. That's not a big deal. You know, I, I think I showed before, or, you know, or tried to, was this avocado seed that has half a seed in here. Well, you know, that can go into my yard, too. I'm not really worried about it sprouting or anything, you know, a piece of an avocado shell. So the castings, they look pretty good. There's not a lot of stuff left in it. There's not a lot of material as far as paper or anything like that but there are a few things and you know they can go into your garden just fine they're going to continue to break down they're going to bring in that population of microbes that you need to to really get your your gardens going so it's not a bad thing to have those in there so you don't want it all paper like if this was primarily paper that's not a good thing to put in you know you really want to have this finished material that the worms have worked through and you know really it's going to add that microbial nutrients that you need now, the other thing that I've talked about in, in before, but this goes into my container, I do keep it a little bit moist. I spray it down every once in a while if it gets dry, because you do need that moisture to keep the microbes alive. But other than that, you just sort of let it sit until you're ready to use it. So I'm going into the winter months right now, being November. It's getting very cold here. I'm not going to be adding a lot of this to my yard. Now, come spring, I'm going to be digging in my yard. I'm going to be adding this like crazy to try to get this this material into my yard and really worked in for my grass and my gardens. So, sorry about that again for my video. You know, I, but here's an update. I mean, as you can see, it's just, it looks really good. It's actually drying out quite a bit. It's a little bit more brown than you might see in some of uh, other ones that always talk about black gold and black material. The brown is because of the cardboard. Um, if you run other materials or you run a lot of coffee grounds, you will find that this is black. And I have found that um, if I add a lot of coffee grounds that I get that same thing. Like this will be, this material will be black. It'll be that black gold that they talk about. But this material is just as healthy. It's just brown because of the inputs, which is that cardboard. I mean, it's, it's hard to uh, cancel out that cardboard, uh, cardboard coloring and, and when, you, when you add food and stuff. So I hope you enjoyed this. I'm again, sorry. And 
Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I'll try to do a little bit better next time about making sure that I have the right uh, camera angle when harvesting. So thank you again for watching.